Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good morning. This is Peter Pedros from Petco. I'm here together with Stefan Küffer, Principal Process Engineer of Petco, and we are going to present you the new features, advantages, and benefits of Applied Safe 4.6. As usual, it is named after a beautiful mountain, after the Matterhorn in Switzerland, the Denali in the US. Now it's the Geratory, the most beautiful mountain in Argentina. Okay, so what did we present for you? It's, uh, we prepared some short news, one slide, and then you know it all, not all, but just a little bit of it. And then of course, um, just for those which have never seen Applied Safe, a 10 minute overview of the features of Applied Safe. And then we will talk mostly about the key changes in the new version, also some metrics, what it means for the implementation new web page and the outlook for the next versions because we already have a huge backlog and then we will start with the queue and answers, uh, question and answer sessions. Now we will stop with the camera and uh, we are still here and if we start the question and answer session we can open it again. Thanks. So I will turn off the camera now and what we presented our company mission, we say that we provide a valid practical platform to implement SAFE in any company in the smoothest, most effective way. And this even in regulated and large scale complex environments. The updates for 4.6 in one slide, um, we have a new version of 4.6 territory available. It is immediately available for evaluation for our partners and it has been provided one week ago to our customers. And we have informed our partners more than a week ago on uh, what Applied Safe is. They have been trained on the new features as well. Our new, our partner network has grown since the last year from 20 to over 32 worldwide partners and there are still others to come. You see here also the new partner directory as it is shown on our website. We have also updated our new value proposition and some new, new kind of infographic on our website and also the metrics have been included. On our website, we will come to, to that later, we have also shown our brand new brochure and fact sheet which just came out two weeks ago and it's all in sync with 4.6. We are at a lot of and at a lot of conferences and booths and speeches. We had last week one in, Stutt in Nuremberg at the Process Insights. We have a blog about that. It was very interesting what we have seen there. It was about artif artificial intelligence and assurance there. This was a very well recepted speech of Dr. Paul Nieseln, CEO of the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. So we're going to be, of course, at the SAFE Summit in Europe, Agile and Beyond in Detroit, at the Agile in Hardware, the Agile in Automotive, and finally at the SAFE Summit in San Diego this year. So Applied SAFE, you know the entry screen, those which have already seen, this is the entry screen of Applied SAFE 4.6 with the new core competencies. And what we have done with Applied SAFE is we have taken the scaled Agile framework and transformed it to a process model so that you can implement SAFE fast and precise. And then I'm going to demo that to you, what that means. You can customize and extend, you can develop compliant, and you can learn, innovate, and improve. So the relentless improvement is completely built into Applied SAFE as well. How we have done that? We have built a comprehensive process model with roles, activities, templates, guidelines, metrics, phases, and as you can see, it's built on the SAFE 4.6. And when we started with 2.5, we said that this will be the de facto standard, but now it really is the standard for scaled agility. And this is something that makes us really happy and proud for SAFE as well. What we can do with Applied SAFE still is we can instantiate on each level as of enterprise, portfolio, large solution, program, and team. 
and we can customize with the built-in tailoring and run multiple concurrent process variations. This is very handy if you imagine that you have probably some programs and teams which have to integrate hardware and firmware and other teams just have to deal with software. So their validation and verification practices may can differ very much. And this is something that we can support with Applied Safe as well. Of course, it needs to be extendable because all our customers already have a huge process asset library and a huge knowledge on how to do things, and this needs to be integrated as well. We are coming up with 4.6. Before Privacy version was 4.5, we are always staying in sync with the current development of the Scaled Agile framework, and each new version gets approved by Scaled Agile as well. You know that the Scaled Agile framework is publicly facing. Everybody can look at it, but you shouldn't use it because it's copyright protected by American law. And by buying Applied Safe, you have the whole safe content included as well. Additionally, we built some compliance mechanisms and capabilities for regulated environments. With that, we say that you implement safe fast and precise, and fast means that you have two years reduced cost of delay because you can use that model almost immediately out of the box. If you want to do it by yourself, even if it takes two years, it will take you 20 person years to build such a model um, from scratch as well. There is a lot of customization and compliance built into safe and applied safe, and we have found all those configuration tailoring options, and it adds up to more than 440 tailoring options. Until now, we have seen 27 different reference models, A, SPICE, IEC 62, 304, CMMI, and so forth. The third benefit is that we have improved clarity. We have much less discussion time on how to interpret SAFE, what SAFE it really is, and the ramp up time for new hires is dramatically reduced as well. So we said that you can implement fast and precise, and this is something that we have done that way. We have built it on a tool which is called Stages, and what usually companies are doing, they take Applied Safe as a content on Stages and enhance it, improve it, adopt it towards their own organizational process, so they would add their verification and validation activities. Now, when you have done that, we can imagine that you have a new hire, and for that, they're going to change to Applied Safe itself, and this is running on a cloud server in Germany. And we can say now that the new hire, let's call him Tom, he is working in a team level. He has some Scrum knowledge, but what he is interested in is to see what that what the portfolio looks like. So Tom clicks on the portfolio and now he's on an instance of portfolio. And what he sees now is that it has been quite much reduced. You have just this Epic Owner Enterprise Architect, you have a Kanban, and Tom clicks on the Kanban board as well. And what we see now is that we have the content from SAFE as it comes from the Scaled Agile framework, but we have translated it in a process model. This is unique to Applied SAFE, so you see some predecessor, successor activities, and if Tom wants to know what Analyze Epic means, he can click on that and he sees what shall be done. So he should take those epics and prioritize them. And if he doesn't know how to prioritize them, he can do that with different practices as shown here. For example, you can use planning poker, capitalization, or weighted shortest job first prioritization. By clicking on that weighted shortest job first prioritization, he sees what it is, which training he could go to so he has the knowledge or in which activity this is needed. So if he goes back to analyze Epic, he sees again what he has to do. Each activity comes up with a full RASIC. So we see who is responsible to do something, who's gonna support him in this role, and who is accountable for that role. And this is true for each activity. One thing that is also helping to implement it fast and precise and to cut on the discussion times is that we have those work products defined as an input, as an output. For example, you can click on the Epic 
lean business case and you see the template as you come from the Excel Agile framework, but you can also see, and this is something which is unique to Applied Safe, that we have a complete domain model. And here we see that we have the brand new artifacts, which are the light green and the dark green artifacts. And if you see that we have a portfolio backlog, which holds several epics, and it has always a lean business case, and it is a backlog item, which is regarded as a requirement in SAFE. And so with these activities, the RASIC, the work products, the work product models with its relations and cardinalities, we really think that it's much, much clearer that you have the common understanding within several hundred persons in your company. If you want to see if Tom would decide on that he wants to become a lean portfolio manager, he could go on the description as he comes from safe and he would be assigned as Tom here, working here. But what we see down here is in which activity he is really responsible for, where he's supporting and where he's accountable for. We have done some metrics as well, and we see, for example, here in the staging, you will have that in your slide deck, but I'm showing it online here as well. So we have some metrics, and those elements which we have shown, the activities, work products, pictures, these are all counted as process elements, and if you count them together on all levels, it sums up to 5,341 process elements. Now, we said that we upgrade from each new version, and if you're interested to see what the change rate means between those two versions, we see that 44% of the content has been unchanged, untouched, and 25% is new or updated, and 31% has been changed. That means some pictures are different, some texts are different. We show here the version and the change rate of each new version started from 2.5 up to 4.5, 4.6. So the, this was the second largest change we ever had from 4.5 to 4.6. I'm going back to the presentation now. Oops, sorry for that. Going further down, and we talked about establishing compliance. And the trick is, and this has been proven by the Tier 45 paper and other papers um, in the in the community, that you can do agile in the regulated environments. Even you can support the FDA requirements. And the trick is that you have to find the hooks which we need for compliance with assurance systems. And this is something that we have done in Applied Safe, and this is what our customers are doing usually as well. So we have our organizational process, and they're mapped to various reference models, maturity models, or industry standards. And in Automotive Spice, it could look like that, so that you have a reference model. We selected here 1703, and here's the text on the right side, right upper side, what that means. And on the right lower side, you see which work products, activities, practices are mapped to that requirement, and we can work against the reference model with those mechanisms. What we can also do in Applied Safe is we can use and have process instances on defined levels. You know the four configurations of Safe, and we have enterprise, portfolio, large solution, program, and team. And if you have an enterprise, you can have several portfolios or zero. If you have a portfolio, it will either consist of large solutions or programs. And if you have programs, it is always true that you have several teams in a program. Such a model will lead to a tree hierarchy. And there can be a mix of all those configurations which you know from SAFE. So here on the left line, we see Swiss Banking Institute trading portfolio large solution reference data, program VDPS, and several teams here. And from the view of this front end and team, it is a full safe configuration. If you see it from a street side program here, you see street side portfolio 
enterprise, it is a portfolio configuration. And it could be even true that you have on the left side some essential safe going on in your company, which is just starting to do safe as well. So they all coexist and potentially all those boxes are different. And this is steered with something that has been built into applied safe as well. And there are some tailoring options which we have built in. We don't have time to demonstrate that to you, but there are several videos which are doing that so that the people can work against their own process variations. So if you have three programs running, you would have three instances of program. And some of them would have verification and validation with hardware, others without. Then we said that we have the relentless improvement implemented as well. And this is something that we see here as well you have to measure the people will work against the process variations and they will have a lot of metrics so a lot of good ideas and these ideas needs to be brought together in the organizational understanding of what safe is for the organization as well so this is the complete uh, deming circle which is implemented here and this is supported by applied safe with various processes as for example these process on the organizational process focus where we have assessment improvement management deployment organizational learnings and so forth i'm jumping over that for the time period and now we want to talk about new features advantages and benefits of applied safe and there is this this is more for reading for you this is not for a presentation of course but what we have done new and this is something that is really quite cool is some new guided tours in 4.6 and we have new guided tours for governance business solution and lean system engineering and for devops and what the thing is what they do is they give you like a different perspective on what the framework is they give you clear guidance on how it's implemented and they will point you to the right points in applied safe and they're going to change to to applied safe right now and we go to the staging environment into the full safe configuration and we can click now on the safe for governance now what we see is that the new window opens and if you have two screens this is quite cool because it shows you what you can do and how you can do something i just click on the on the right side on the left side we have the guided tours and if we click now on those things we see why shall we do that and here's the practice as well but also what we can do so if we click for example on the next background of agile adoption then we see also what that means in applied safe and how you can use that for example also that article on safe for governance talks that you need to have a governance as a lean enterprise and it points you here to the organizational process focus and here it talks about how you can do that that you need to have governance and process defined and in place and that existed before and this is really something that we liked quite alike that we liked quite alike and the fun factor is that it really shows what has been written, what you shall do from one perspective. And here it says how you can do that. So here it talks about that you need to have government technology development as also specific guidance. And you do that with a QMS. And now we have a lean QMS, which is quite different as before. So this is all part of the new safe for government and guided tours then it also talks about that you should adopt line lean budgeting to value streams and this was reflected in the value stream process so we are not talking about what it is we also talk about how you can do it if you have different trains if you have different arts scenarios if there are multiple value stream arts or a single value stream arts then one thing that uh, we talked also is a modified acquisition. Acquisition is very important, especially for governance as well. And we can show that here that we have implemented, as we, we had that before, that we have supplier management in a traditional way, where you work with agreements or in an agile manner, as defined in SAFE, where you would start your own train for a supplier. And of course, this is not only possible in the large solution, but also for program and for team level. 
there is always the possibility that you can have suppliers in your program's large solution and teams. Something that makes us very happy is that we talk about adopting governance in in safe for governance uh, of course and we saw that you have a governance model and in our process this existed before it was very handy that we could add up directly to adjust governance and it fitted so well so this is something that we are quite reluctant on that we like that i press f11 here on the browser again and then we have the full screen and now something that i want to also show is on on the full safe is that we have implemented the core uh, the five core competencies here one of them for example is the we have the lean portfolio management business solution and lean systems devops and release on demand team and technical agility and lean agile leadership if you look at the team and technical agility and here we are on the enterprise level then we see what we do and where it is used and we see here that it is is that this is related to activities which are on an enterprise level so it is talking about the process engineers who are doing the process engineering on an enterprise level now if we take the same configuration and we go into a team level and we click on the team and technical agility we see completely different activities and this is something that we call context sensitive guidance huh? because we can we know we are now on a team level and we're talking about different thing than we did before and there is something that I would like to show you now. yes hi everybody um, just want to go a little bit more into details here when we are on technical and team agility uh, towards uh, behavior driven design and test driven design and if we um, go into a detailed view then you see that we have um, a specific practice to create stories with behavior driven development you remember we are still on team level now and this practice is for example applied in an activity refined backlog so the po's you see here now the full um, process view with the different activities so the po is refining the backlog and then applying this specific um, practice and there is a little bit more detail you see that the behavior driven development practice itself is um, assigned to this activity which gives all the information you need to do bdd on uh, backlog refinement now, BDD is also used on uh, the team itself. Uh, you see, we are on the same process now, but on the activity define build test increment where the whole Agile team is working. Remember, we don't approach here waterfall. This is really a con constant loop of defining, building, and testing and incrementing. And also, the, it, when you do the define part here, you apply BDD. And additionally, now here, when we go on the details view with the practices, you see that you can also apply the TDD activity that is belonging to this part, um, which gives you all the information um, that you need to apply TDD. So this is just an example when you break down on, on team level, how these different elements are combined and assigned to each other so that the users really easily find the needed content, the why in practices and the what in the activities. Thank you very much, Stefan. And something that I want to show you as well is on the portfolio safe. This is something which is brand new, is the portfolio canvas. And the portfolio canvas you have already seen. It, yes, it shows to you. And this is something that pulls together the information of the value propositions, the resources, and the activities and the cost structure uh, structure and revenue streams and this is something that has been implemented quite new and something uh, that is unique to apply safe those work product models is also if we talk about governance and we see here the new domain model this is brand new for four six that we have a portfolio which holds a portfolio canvas and we have a current portfolio canvas and we have scenarios of future portfolio canvas and there can be several of them so because that evolves with the system and of course we have for the value stream also a value stream canvas 
If you look at all the work products of 4.6, the new version, you see here the dark green, which existed before, light greens, which is the new one. We have the portfolio canvas, the lean budget guardrail, and the investment horizon guardrail. And if you click on that, we see beautifully that this aligns with the various horizons on the value streams. You can see, hey, we are about to evaluate, we are emerging, we are vexing, and we are as an adding specific capacities on those value streams. And this is something that we really like to see as well. So this is also needed, for example, in the prepare PI plan. Uh, yes, now back to me. So I move on here with the uh, uh, solution roadmap when you're preparing um, our planning. Um, so you see that we have also here a work product which is called the solution roadmap. So I just click on that now to show what it is. What is now more differentiated in version 4.6 is the solution roadmap and the PI roadmap. And what you see here is that the solution roadmap is, it's, is the longer term perspective, especially on large solutions. It's very important because you have so many dependencies in a, in a big um, product that a big and complex product that you want to build. So you plan in the near term in quarters, then a little bit later in semesters, half years, and then up to years. So you see here an example that is going up to four years. And remember, it's very important that this is just the roadmap. This is not a plan. So only the milestones that are showed here are, are very important to achieve, but the features or capabilities itself, they still might change. This is not a commitment to that roadmap. It's just a, an approach on how you would implement the whole solution. So that's what you define um, on large solution level. We go into a process view now so that you see the activity where it, this work product is applied, the building of the solution road, roadmap, which is um, influenced by understanding the market rhythm, rhythms and market events that might influence some of those milestones that you see here on the solution roadmap. Now, when you have your solution roadmap, you have to coordinate all your release trains, the arts underneath. So you have a consolidating activity for the solution roadmap and in the uh, and, and some information additionally that is explaining you um, how you do that. I think I have to go back to I first wanted to show you the overview here. Um, on the practice here because there is the applying of multiple planning horizons there is a specific practice where you see that the a solution roadmap is derived out of the solution vision and then you do this um, alignment with the different trains so that each of the pi roadmap is really aligned with the overall solution roadmap so that's coming from this uh, activity building the solution roadmap that we have seen before. And now when we do the consolidated, so the second step that I showed it before, we are using the PI roadmaps from the program level. So when I'm clicking here, I'm directly going into the instance of a program where I do have my PI roadmap. And you see that the PI roadmap has the first PI, which is the one that you normally commit. So this is then really a committed PI. And the other two PIs that are showed here, again, it's it's kind of an approach uh, of features that you think that you will deliver with the next PIs. Normally you do that over, over about three PIs in the PI roadmap. And this is done in the activity building the PI roadmap that you see here now on program level. So the the dashed um, uh, boxes here show elements that you would do if you would not have a um, four-level approach with the large solution. In this approach that we have here, the, um, uh, um, the, the the instance uh, definition that we have done here to have a large solution level that is defining the solution and the program is defining the, the PI. And if you would only have three level approach, then you would also do the solution roadmap on, on program level. This can be quite confusing, right, Stefan? <laughs> Sometimes, yes, but uh, there Applied Safe is really a lot of help because um, you see all these different details. You can just click on the different level and then it's really showing you how it works and how it has to be done. So with that, I give back to Peter. And Stefan, the solution roadmap, that was really a thing in the new version. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. And I think, uh, yes, these guided tours are extensible. And you see in the slide deck that we have added 
some things which we showed you just before in our roadmap so you will have it for your records as well in the slide deck availability um 4.6 is already out. We have delivered to our partners, to customers, and to evaluations as well. If you want to do an online demo or evaluate the product yourself, just get in contact with us, applied safe at petco.eu. And otherwise, I just would like to summarize with an outlook and some final numbers, and then we would like to start with the QA session. Outlook, uh, you know, Stage is our underlying platform. It came up with a newer version 7.3 and it is now ready to support all the capabilities which we have used in from the previous, previous stages versions as well. So we will go in April 2019 to the new version of stages as well and at least until end of October until the last customers have moved to the new version as well we will stay in both versions stages 6 and 7. The version number 7 is a major step stone, milestone in the development of stages because it becomes now totally modern and user interface it's very much navigatable like in the 21st system it's more like facebook generation and that stuff but it's still stages with the functionality which you already know we have redesigned our website if you happen to take a look on it take a look there's a lot of new content you see the partner directory conferences a brand new blog and also a new materials and video page which I show you here there you can download the newest brochure fact sheet placemates and also some of the newest video the video of today will be shown here the new record records of 4.6 in april 2019 we will also start to create new five minutes learning nuggets because we have learned that a lot of people don't want to watch 45 minute webinars so we just make specific topics how to do tailoring how to do instantiation and these will be maximum five minute learning nuggets and they will all be published with the new version of stages 7.3 as well i promised you some numbers and as you have seen applied safe we see that 67 percent of the time and this comes from our customers there's less discussion needed on how to integrate safe and we have faster process improvement with built-in organizational learning and it will take you only three days and then you're up and running to enhance enlarged model by yourself it is a hundred percent solid comprehensive implementation of safe as each version is approved by its inventors this time it was Richard Nestor who approved the whole model. For that, I would like to conclude to just remind you that we are providing safe trainings. Safe trainings are, except in Switzerland, all provided by our valued partners through the world, and they know Applied Safe, so they can talk to you in conjunction with Applied Safe as well. For the time being, the Applied Safe trainings are all um, executed by by trainers of Petco and then of course we continue to spread our knowledge about uh, lean agile process engineering compliance workshops and so forth which we are um, heading out in our web page with the name lean agile workshops as well come and meet with us see us we are at the safe summits in Den Haag in San Diego we are at the agile hardware in Frankfurt and the agile in automotive and the Agile and Beyond in Detroit as well. Topics about managing different life cycles. We have seen how to handle Agile, Waterfall, Iterative life cycles all together. If you have to balance regulatory requirements, engineering in scaled agility and what benefits us, just reach out to us. With that, we have come to an end and now we would like to open some questions and I see there are already some things in the chat. So, first question is, um, what happens to my extensions when I update? Ah, uh, to new versions, uh, okay. Um, I think I can answer that, Stefan, huh? okay. So, um, what happens is, this is a normal case. We, we say that all our customers should and do usually enhance our 
models, they enhance supply safe. They could use it out of the box, but they will add usually their verification, validation, and so forth. And um, an update is a normal thing, so we have described that as a practice as well. And uh, for example, if you want to go process update, so we're going to hear, so you're going to receive a so-called core process. So that means that this is complete content of Applied Safe. And you load that in your own organizational understanding. And then you can decide, you see that there's a new version and you can update on it. And there are three possibilities. If you, it could happen that nothing changed at all. Uh, on our side and you change something, then it's clear to the optic mechanism that there's nothing to do. If it has changed on our side and you didn't change it, there's nothing to do as well. But if you have changed something and we changed something on our side, there's the conflict. And this is the classic branch merge problem. And this is supported by a visual representation as well. So here you would say, hey, there is a conflict here. And this is so-called overlay in stages. And so you can say, hey, let's go back to the trunk or let's stay in the in our previous version. And this you can steer here and you will see, hey, here is the description, here are the assignments, or here are the properties. And you can really see how those things have changed. And so you have it totally on the and on the control. What was the question? Yeah, and um, extensions. So the extensions, they stay the same. You can decide uh, on each element if you want to keep it or you want to change the newer version. But if you have instantiations and the tailoring used as well, you can update on tailoring projects as well. Mm -hmm. So the tailoring will can be left the same. So you don't have to retail it just because there is a new system. And it's also possible that each endeavor chooses for himself when they want to change on the newer version. So if you have several programs going on and one of the program is quite under stress, a heavy load, they have a big milestone coming on, they may don't want to change on the new version of Applied Safe or Safe right now. They want to stay in 4.5. So they can do that. And other programs, they can go to 4.6 as well. And this is supported because all the processes or on the configuration management as well. Okay, I think that was a little bit a long answer. Um, let's see if we have another question. And there's who helps us implementing safe? Oh, yeah, um, we of course we have a, a partner network. We have these 32 partners. There are uh, consulting partners. There are most of them. They're also safe partners, so they have a quite a big track record of how to implement safe. Most of them have SBCTs or even safe fellows. There's C Prime, Blue Agility, Rome Agile, Kagon, Safe Journey in Denmark. That, that was in Kagon. Then we have in uh, Yellow Intelligent in the Netherlands, ACM in the Turkey. We have really 32 partners worldwide, Redaka in Mexico. And they are all trained in Ukraine. We have partners as well. And they are all trained in applied safe they have been either here in zurich or invited us and they have been trained for three days five days on using applied safe and changing it so they can do the transformation the cultural transformation towards safe together with applied safe so they can help you quite well they speak your language they know your domain and they're local to you so you don't have to fly in people from switzerland okay and uh, let me see if there are any further questions. Do you see another question? No? Okay. And um, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, let me go back to the presentation. Yeah. Uh, we would like to hear from you um, for contact, just call us or write us an email if you want to start an evaluation. If you want to know more about the new version of 4.6, we just could show you a glimpse on it, what it really means and what it is and what it brings to the people. And it is really 
proven that the ramp up time for new hires is dramatically reduced and the discussion time on how safe is meant can be reduced dramatically. We have seen up to 67%, maybe it's more even. Okay, that was all from us for today. So we are wishing you a nice day and bye-bye from Zurich, from Peter. Thank you very much and bye-bye from me as well, bye.